Hello Carleton Biology students and welcome to another tutorial on how to do cool stuff in Excel. Today's tutorial is on how to make a multi-data series line graph. The sort of line graph that you'll be expected to make for your Lab 2 report uh, related to the part of your report that deals with these types of data. So remember you had, you're flipping your cards over and you're monitoring each group, each pair of students is monitoring the frequency of the A allele, which corresponded to certain numbers of cards. And you're keeping track of it over generations until it reached fixation or loss, or after 10 generations, if it still wasn't fixed or lost, you just, you just said it was not available. So the, these are the data you're expected to graph. You're expected to graph uh, five groups, including your own and at least one other group that reached loss or fixation as well as some random other ones and you're also expected to add the average with error bears so I'm going to show you how to do all that now I'm not going to show you how to do it on an actual data set this one being bio 1104 Thursday morning data instead I'm gonna of course use this opportunity to talk about insects and use an insect data data series to show you so uh, we're going to be using a data series that's related to this paper that just came out recently in December uh, on ladybird melanism and the frequencies of it over time in different places. The data we're using are not the exact data that they used in this study, uh, but we're going to be using similar data that portray the same message that they, that they show. I'm just making it a little bit simpler for you. So this is the insect that the study was on. You would note it you would call it the ladybug. People like me, entomologists, we cringe when we hear the word bug because it's usually misapplied. Sometimes it's applied to pretty much any insect or even to things that are totally unrelated to insects, like microbes are called bugs by people. So uh, the term bug is actually a very specific word in biology. It relates to, uh, it means one specific order of insects, the hemipterans, the true bugs. True bugs include bed bugs, water striders, assassin bugs, and other really cool insects. They all have a sharp beak, basically, a piercing mouth part, and overlapping wings on their back. The ladybug, on the other hand, is actually a beetle. You can tell this because it has a line down its back between its two, two hard elytra, or uh, covering wings. So it's a ladybird beetle. but. If you want to keep calling it a ladybug, that's fine. Just watch me cringe. So here's this life cycle. It lays its eggs, nice little yellow eggs. These are them as a larvae. You'll find them in your garden. This, this two-spotted ladybird beetle is around here. These things eat aphids like crazy. So if you find them in your garden, keep them there and you know show them some love because they're really good for your garden. This is what they look like as pupae. You might think it's some disease on a leaf or something. It's just It's basically their version of a cocoon that they come out as an adult looking like this guy. Two spots. Adelia bipunctata, two-spotted ladybird beetle. This is the normal morph you see that's orange with two black spots. They also come in this black morph, also known as the melanistic morph. Uh, as you can see, they it's one species. They interbreed with each other. It's just a slight genetic change between them that makes, makes it a dark morph or a red morph. The the dark morph, the melanistic morph, tends to do better in cooler climates. It sucks up the sun easier, basically. And so it has an advantage in cool areas. So we're going to be looking at a data set that relates the frequency of the melanistic morph at several locations over time. What the study that this, these data are based on found is that the dark morph that has an advantage at cooler climates uh, didn't do so, it's doing quite badly nowadays. It used to be really common in the cool areas of the Netherlands and now it's, it's doing rather poorly as global warming has happened. There's, it doesn't have any advantage anymore over the red morph. So, similar to your data set, we have a bunch of populations over several time series. First thing we'll do is we'll select five random populations. 
three, four, five. There's my five. And I'm just going to color the code them uh, yellow, just so I can see them better. Those are my five populations that I'm going to graph. And I also want to graph the average. So let's start by calculating the average, and then we'll graph it all. Average. And you guys know how to do all this already from the other videos. You take, we want to take the average of all the populations, not just the five that you'll be graphing. Beauty. And we're also going to take the standard deviation of all of our populations. We don't care about the standard, standard deviation. Oops, I forgot to type the formula. Standard deviation of all our populations. We don't care about standard deviation per se, it just helps us calculate standard error beauty. And you know that standard error is just the standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. And we have 10 populations here, if I've counted right. There we go. So we now have the average standard deviation and standard error of all of our populations for the 1970 sample. To copy this formula for each of these other columns, you could type it again for all these cells, but that's a pain in the butt. Instead, what you can do is just select them like I've done here, and then the bottom right of that rectangle has a little dot on it. And when you cursor over that dot, it looks like a plus sign. You just click on that and drag it to wherever you want it to copy the formulae and release, and there you go. It's copied the formulae, so now this cell, for instance, is measuring the standard deviation of the cells above it. Cells F4 to F13 corresponding to exactly what we wanted to take the standard deviation of. Thank you, Excel. Okay, so now we have all our information that we want. I'm just going to color the average green, how about, so we can see it nice and easily. Okay, time to graph. Insert, line graph, we want a line with markers. So we'll choose this guy. And I'll just move him off to the side a little. And select data. There's a few ways you can select the data for this graph. I'm going to show you the way... Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'll, just, I'll show you the one way. So I'm going to select my top header row and this row that I want. I'm going to hold down control and select each of my other data series that I want. I'm still holding control and I'm going to collect that average too. There we go. So now in a nice little blinking screen I've got all the data series I want great. I'm going to hit OK just to show you that it's it's not perfect the way it's made, and I'll show you how to fix that. OK. Looks terrible. Oh no. What's gone wrong? It's trying to m map population, the header row, as a data series. Silly Excel. Let's fix that. We go back to select data. We see that indeed population is included as one of our data series. So we remove that. And now, ah, that looks better. We've got all our, our five populations and our average plotted very nicely. But unfortunately, the x-axis is a bunch of random numbers. And indeed, we see here, horizontal axis labels are just a bunch of numbers. So we tell it, uh, edit axis label range. We're going to tell it, Put these guys on the x-axis, please. Good, it did it. I hit OK. All right. So we've got the basic parrot of our graph. I'm going to get rid of these grid lines because they anger me. Uh, we're going to keep the legend. Normally, that's one of the first things I do is delete the legend because we've only had one data series in most of our graph so far, but here we actually need the legend because we've got a bunch of different data series we need to be able to know which is which. 
So there's a few things we need to do with this graph before we can hand it in. We've got the data on there, but uh, we need to clean it up a little bit, and we need to add error bars to our average. So let's start by adding the error bars to our average. The first thing you need to do is click on the average data series, this guy. I know that from the legend, it's this light blue line. If you don't click on the average data series first before you start doing the error bar stuff, it's going to add error bars to all of your data series, and we don't want that. We only want error bears for your average. So we go to layout, error bears, more error bear options. Good, we want error bears going up and down. We want them to have a cap on it. Good. We ignore all these silly Excel defaults that make no sense. And we're going to specify a value. I'm going to move this window away because otherwise it would block what I want to select. So I'm going to tell it to specify a value positive error value will be these standard error values and our negative error value is going to be the exact same ones. We got the bars going up and down around the average points are going to be symmetrical. Oh good, we have nice error bars around the average now. Now we need to clean up the colors. What we are asking you to do in the uh, graph that you hand in is to make all of the population's data series gray and the average black so it stands out. To make sure you can still distinguish between data series, have the actual symbols differ between them, be like X's and squares and stuff like that. Excel is good at doing that by default and so that way in the legend here you'll still be able to distinguish them even when they're all black. I'm sorry, all gray. So I click on this data series. I'm going to format it. Marker fill. We're going to make you gray. Just like that. Line color. Solid line. Gray. And the marker line surrounding the marker. Yeah, you're going to be gray too. Excellent. Close. Now it's a beautiful, exciting gray color. We're going to do that to the rest of the data series. I'm actually going to try to do more than one data series at a time. I don't know if I can. No, maybe not. No, OK. So you have to do that individually for all the data series. You right click on them, format, change all the different colors so that they're gray. Oops. good. And for the average, we're going to do the same, but make it black. <clears throat> good. So I won't do that for all the other data series to make them gray, because you get the picture by now. But that's what you're going to get. You're going to get these gray lines with gray markers representing your populations, black line with black markers representing your average with error bears around it, fix up your axes, add axes labels, so that, you know, the font is appropriate, they're in black lines for the axis lines, there's axes labels there, and that's about it. That's how you make a, one of these types of graphs for your report. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something about bugs and beetles.